Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint eucalyptus. Now we've had one go before at the willow eucalyptus but today the type we're going to do is more like the sand dollar eucalyptus which you see in all sorts of bouquets and arrangements and I thought as we're really learning tons of flowers now it's time to get a bit of extra foliage so we can put some bouquet arrangements together. So grab your paints and let's get started. Eucalyptus is one of my absolute favourites and it's one of the most popular projects from my book New Botanical Painting. So I thought it was high time to revisit it and like I said we're going to do a sort of sand dollar eucalyptus. So what I'm doing to start off with is I am drawing in a series of branches are coming off a central stem and they sort of grow quite smooth and straight upwards and that's all we need the pencil for so goodbye pencil. Now my eucalyptus painting project is done in a way that I use the sort of transparency of dilute watercolour to achieve the lovely sort of dusky green colours of the leaves even though eucalyptus is not a transparent uh, foliage, the leaves are very thick and strong, but I love the way that the transparency of layers and overlap of the leaves really capture the essence, and that's what I'm all about. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a rather sort of brown-centric shadow mix using Prussian blue and burnt sienna, which is my absolute choice of uh, blue when it comes to doing botanical work and then down here mixing up my sap green and I'm going to create a lovely sort of dusky bluey green leaf colour using the Prussian blue and then just a little bit of the burnt sienna to just knock it back a little bit and we'll be using both these colours in a really dilute manner and I might add, what's quite nice is when I revisit these projects, having done them in the book, I like to sort of change up a few things because we're always developing as artists, aren't we? And I'm adding in a little bit of cobalt turquoise into that leaf mix and I think that's really going to look absolutely lovely. So we are going to start from the base and work our way up. So I'm using a size two brush and then I'll be sort of in deciding in the moment whether my size six or size eight works because the leaves are lovely and broad and big and we want to be able to achieve those with as few brush strokes as possible. So let's start. So we're starting from the bottom and I've only got this tiny weeny bit of stem here. So I'm going to paint just like that and then I'm going to put in my first leaf. So we're going to sort of work in sections, working our way up. Now, eucalyptus leaves are, we sort of, if we, if we just sort of think of them as round, completely round shapes, we're, we're doing them a disservice. They're a little bit more like a lily pad, like a sort of upside down spade in a pack of cards. But what I'm doing here is I'm painting in section by section, going up each stem and doing stem, leaf, stem, leaf, and eucalyptus leaves grow in pairs going up the stem. So what we're doing is we're doing our first layer. Now I am going to paint in the next bit of stem and this is going to just very gently touch the edge of that leaf and that's wonderful. I'm all for little bits of overlap and blend because that colour really does creep in to the leaf. So I'm going to go further up the stem. Eucalyptus leaves get a little bit smaller as they reach the end of the stem. And as I said, they just still continue to grow in pairs. So just one last little bit here and one last little 
piece of eucalyptus leaf. Now you could do the entire thing with a large brush if you fancied, um, but I think a lot of us prefer the control of maybe a slightly smaller brush when we are working on this scale. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go back to our main stem and work our way up to there. So we're just finding all the junctions really, aren't we? And then I'm going to fill in that leaf shape there. Now, what's interesting is I am working in a very dilute paint, but I don't want it to be completely sopping wet and saturated. So I've put in a little outline there and working quite quickly, I can fill it in. And although it is dilute and wet, like I said, it's not completely soaking. There's no puddling on the page. And that's really important. That's what we need to make sure we don't get tons and tons of water there. Okay, I think I'm, whoops a daisy. I'm pretty sure we don't need the size eight brush, so it was just getting in the way. Right, let's keep on moving on up. You know, I might just have both brushes in my hands and do it like that. Right, now we're here. We want to be careful not to get too sort of close to the other wet leaves of this round. Let's go up here first. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish off this whole first layer and we're gonna let it dry and then we'll return to do the second layer. So here is our dried first layer. So I can just run my finger over the top of that and everything is bone dry. What's also lovely to see is the translucent color has uh, created these beautiful crisp edges around the edge of the, the little discs, making them look almost as if we had painted in a really fine, delicate outline. But that's the beauty of watercolor is it does that. The water floods to the edge and the color floods the edge of the barrier where the water is keeping it in place. So it's absolutely lovely. Okay, we're done with the size two brush for this stage. So now we just need our bigger brush and we need a little bit more of our leaf mix. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit more paint in there and we just need a bit more of that as well, don't we? That's essentially what it is. Okay, and nice and dilute. So the second layer is just as dilute as the first. For those of you who have my book, you'll know this is a technique I really enjoy, especially with anemones, um, painting sort of layered petals in a translucent manner. It's really satisfying. Okay, so the second leaf is going to be put in at each point where the first leaf has been growing. So they grow in parallels. So I'm going to anchor my first leaf from the base there and I'm going to have it sort of as if it was unfurling from the same point. So you can draw in your shape and then fill it in. And of course, there are gonna be times when that leaf, uh, the leaf we've already painted in, so sort of you need to almost really contrast it with a leaf that's really sort of folded out and flattened. So you can just do a nice flat shape like that. Or they might be looking a little bit like a little pear here. What I try to do is I try to avoid the leaves overlapping with any of the other pairs of leaves, just for an aesthetic reason, really. But because we've allowed that first layer to dry 100%, it means that the second wet layer of leaf is not remotely disturbing 
those first leaves. And then what we'll do, once this is all dried, we can rub out the pencil and then we'll be left with a glorious sprig of eucalyptus and I really wanted to teach you the eucalyptus uh, on YouTube as well as in my book because we're going to start painting more floral arrangements sort of groupings of different flowers and when we're talking about sort of uh, bouquets of sort of popular bouquets of today, eucalyptus is nearly always in there. And for good reason, it's beautiful. And it's a beautiful muted dusky color that's a very good supporting act when it comes to putting flowers and foliage together. Okay, so that is the second layer done. We're gonna allow that to dry then we're going to come back in, rub out the pencil and just see if there's anything else we can add. Here we have our completely dry second layer and I have also used my trusty putty rubber to just rub out the little bits of pencil and I'm thrilled with that. So the one thing I could do a little bit more of is the tiniest bit of shadow underneath the just the little pieces of branch that we can see. So I will just do that. I'm going to get a little bit of the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna back into play. And this time it's got a lot more of the blue tone in it. And I'm gonna use a small brush, a size 3 tenths. Just make sure there's no water globules on the side of the brush. And only very subtly, I'm not going to do too much because what's lovely about this is it is a translucent and delicate piece. And what's nice there is I feel like it looks like the leaf is sort of behind the stem. So I'm just doing a few little brush strokes just where the stem meets the leaf. And there you have it, a lovely bit of eucalyptus just revisited from my book, New Botanical Painting, and given a tiny weeny tweak. So I really hope that you enjoy painting your eucalyptus and you can add it in to all sorts of arrangements. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. That's a really useful bit of foliage to add in to all sorts of arrangements. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you subscribe, then you will never miss another video. Until next time, bye.